Hi guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. In today's video, we are going to discuss few of the thread related interview questions that were asked in Capgemini and in Cognizant. So let's move to our first question, which is, can you explain me how to create thread? So there are two ways of creating thread. One is by extending a thread class and other ways by implementing a runnable interface. Let's look at both of them. At line number four, I created a my thread class which extends a thread class. When you do this, you have to override a method which is public void run. The signature has to be exactly same. And whatever logic you write within this run method is the logic for your thread. So this is the first way of creating a thread. The second way is by implementing the runnable interface. So here we implement a, an interface which is runnable. It has one method which is public abstract void run and then you have to override this method in your class. So let's see, we just overrode this method at line number 12, public void run and we wrote the logic for this thread which is just printing thread is running. So this way we can create thread either by extending thread class or by implementing runnable interface. So let's look at the example of main method. When we create a thread, we have to start it. So we do my thread thread one equal to new my thread and then we start a thread. In case of runnable, there is one extra step where we first create instance of runnable. So you can see my runnable runnable equal to new my runnable. Then we create a thread and pass runnable to a thread and then we do thread dot start. So in case of extending a thread, we directly do thread dot start. But in case of runnable, we create runnable, then we create thread and then we do start. So these are the two ways of creating thread. Let's move to our next question, which is what are the different states of the thread? So there are various states of thread, but we are going to look at three prominent steps. So I'll run this program and show you what are the states. So here you can see new runnable and terminated. So when we create a thread and we haven't started my thread yet, at that stage, the thread is in new state. So here you can see when I print the state after creating a thread, it is in new state. When I start my thread at line number nine, so at this line, I start my thread, thread dot start. And then at line number 10, I print the state. At this stage, the state is runnable. You can see when I start my thread, the state become runnable. That means it is eligible to run. Then when it is running, then we print a thread is running. And finally, at line number 12, uh, thread.join is where uh, the execution stops until the thread is complete. So after line number 12, the thread is completed. And when I try to print the state at line number 13, it shows that your thread state is terminated. So there are three prominent steps. One is state new state. The second is runnable state. And third one is terminated state. So that is about the state. Uh, the next question that was asked is, what is deadlock? And can you explain me the concept of deadlock? So here, I'll go to my paint and um, I'll show you. Uh, so there are, consider there are two threads. One is, I'll take the pointer. So I'll take this pointer. Uh, there is thread T1 and there is thread T2. Now consider thread 1 wants to acquire two locks. Okay. And similarly, my thread 2 wants to acquire two locks. And what are these two locks? These two locks are uh, lock 1 and lock 2. So T1, consider T1 already acquired lock 1. And T2 already acquired lock 2. Now what T1 is attempting to do is T1 is trying to acquire lock 2, which T2 has already acquired. Similarly, what T2 is trying to do? T2 is trying to acquire lock 1, which T1 has already acquired. So they are not getting locks. So this state is known as deadlock, where T1 is waiting on some other lock, which T2 has already acquired, and T2 is waiting for some other lock, which T1 has already acquired. So this condition is known as deadlock. So let's uh, look at the program where we can see deadlock. Here you can see we have two locks, lock one and lock two, and I create two threads, thread one and thread two. So here thread one is uh, synchronizing on lock one. Uh, that means it is trying to acquire lock one. 
and within the synchronized block, it is trying to acquire block two. But thread two logic is entirely reverse. It is first trying to acquire log two and then trying to acquire log one. So this condition will result in deadlock. So you have to explain with this example within synchronized block. First T1 is acquiring, trying to acquire log one and then log two, and thread two first trying to acquire log two and then log one. So if you explain this example to the interviewer, then the interviewer will understand the concept of deadlock. Now the final question is: Can you explain me what is synchronized and why it is used? So you have to take an example of bank account where there are two methods: one is deposit and one is withdrawal. So uh, you have to tell interviewer that. When, while depositing, no one should be withdrawing from the same account and while withdrawing, no one should be depositing in the same account. Then how do we ensure that only one method is executed by thread at a time? Then we have to add a synchronized method. When you add synchronized method to both the, uh, when you add synchronized keyword to both the methods, that ensures when withdrawal method is getting executed, then deposit is not getting executed. Similarly, when deposit is getting executed, then withdraw is not getting executed. So only one method can be executed at a time. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching.